So a very good morning to you. Uh, a lofty or fit and well? Uh, yeah, we're getting there, Bevan. Um, and hello to everyone. Um, are you there? Yep, we're here. We're here. We're here. Yeah, yeah sorry. Um, yeah, no, I'm slowly coming right. I've been off uh, I've just over four months now, out of the cast in the boot for just over four weeks, and it's taking some time to sort of get the movement back, and um, I'm still sort of another three weeks away, but um, I'll still be struggling for a little while after that too. So, um, yeah, no, it's an uh, injury that can give people a lot of trouble, but I've had good reports on it so far from my movement and all that. OK, yeah, the decision to retire in the end, an, an easy decision because, like, your history of uh, injuries over the years has just been horrific. Yeah, it has been really. Um, that wasn't really the the main key. Like um, that's part of the game, really. Um, but yeah, I've probably been close to nearly eight years on the sideline, and um, yeah, this was just the last score, basically. And um, I thought it was a good time to probably look at doing something different and um, just having a different lifestyle and being able to have the weekends so I can go and watch kids play sports and yeah, just something different, really. Before we look at your record uh, over the years, because you do have a great record in New Zealand racing, is it a story you can tell how you got the, the nickname Lofty? Uh, yes, the very first day I walked into a stable, my old boss, uh, Jack Taylor, walked up to the gateway at the stable, spun around and said, I've got to give you a nickname. And um, Lofty it was, and it's stuck ever since. 16 year old, 1982, I think you started with Jack. Uh, does that sound about right? Yeah, that'd be right. And you stayed the um, whole... Sorry, you... no, it would have been 15. 15? When, you, when I started, yeah. And you had four years with Jack. Before moving on to Don Grubb, is, uh, is the record show that Don Grubb, you went to him later on? Yes, it was, yeah, yeah. I'd been with Jack for about four years and did my last uh, about 18 months with Don Grubb and he just put me on the map, basically, but I... I started to grow a little bit at that stage. When I went to Don's, I was probably 18 and was still 36 kilos. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was just too light, basically. 36 kilos, that's amazing. Amazing. Do you remember <laughs> the 8th of the 4th, 1985, the records at NCTR show, Kaylee is your first winner at Fielding? Uh, yes, it was. I had some nearly 30 starts and it was only a little wee thing with Ben Deers and... I actually only weighed in for fourth and I was quite disappointed, but there was about eight horses in the space of about half a length across the line and um, dead heated with another horse. So, yeah, it took them some five minutes, I think, close to it anyway, before they made a decision on the winner. So. OK, we probably move along to a day that you'll remember forever, the 24th of the 1st, 1987. And it was uh, the Cup Carnival at Trentham, and uh, what a day it was for you. Restus, the big grey. What do you remember of him? Because I don't think you rode him the start before he won the Cup. Uh, Marie Davey was on, uh, but you took out uh, the Group 1, the Cup, uh, on Restus, and uh, look, it was an amazing race as well. Yeah, it was. He, but he had a good record on sort of rain-affected tracks, and he had actually a very good record on the Trenton course. And, um, and it was rain on the day, and um, he, the horse just felt enormous in the prelim. And um, I actually said to one of the starting boys who had a top hat on, you eat my hat if I win this. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he just felt that good on the way around, and it was quite amazing. Lightweight chance, and, yeah, he got the result. Johnny alone, on the same day, he'd run around in the Telegraph and run fourth uh, from memory, and then you took out the Thorndon on him as well. What a day. What a day, all right. And... Um, Weird part was the, the trainer of the Johnny Alone stood at the top of the steps and said, "Oh, you'll win the double." <laughs> <laughs> that, at that stage, I was on cloud nine anyway. So, but um, yeah, was, he just won enormous. He won a good race the first day in the sprint, and um, yeah, he obliged quite nicely in the Thorndon. Um, it's been a very good race to me. The Thorndon have won it three times now. So, yep. We we're going to have a look at a couple of those. Uh, you won on Silky Oak and an Evandale Cup, Del Coronado uh, at Ellerslie, and then we move on to Pace in Vader. And we bring this vision here because this is one of your best group one rides. Uh, you looked as though you're in a bit of trouble. She was, or well, he was a great mare, Pace and Vader, and you're a bit of a trouble in behind them. But once you got the split, gee, Pace and Vader, ill fated Pace and Vader just put them away by a margin, really. 
Yeah, she did. Yeah, um, she won quite convincingly, and um, actually had to survive a protest, and all protested against me. But um, yeah, luckily yeah, all was good. And uh, once I seen the video, I wasn't actually that concerned. <laughs> so, but no, she won really nicely. Alamosa, uh, now standing at start in New Zealand, he was a winner across uh, the Kesmeran as well. Uh, I remember this race quite vividly because he was a horse with an amazing turn of foot and on this day you had to get to the outside because there was a little bit of sting out of the track. Yeah, the track was just a bit better out wide but he, he had, and he had an inside draw. He just, um, oh, it was just a lovely horse to ride. You could put him anywhere and do anything with him. Um, like I only had the one ride on him but... He was a lovely animal and um, yeah, he won quite nicely on the day. If I'm right by memory, you also had a ride on Jimmy Shooter early, didn't you? Yes, I did. Um, he'd had one start and Jonathan was suspended and um, they told me I was just warm in the seat. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, he was a lovely horse at the time and I said to them at the time he'd go on to good things, but I didn't expect him to go on that far. Mm, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, he was a lovely horse as well. Now, unfortunately, uh, Paul, I suppose the injuries have been the thing that have really held you back over the last uh, 10 uh, years or so. I remember seeing a photo of uh, Paul Graham, I think, uh, the rugby league uh, forward in the Sunday News, and they had a diagram of him with everything he'd broken. Well, I, I honestly don't think there would be enough room in the paper if we were to do that for you. <laughs> yeah, I've broken bones. I think I worked it out in double figures yesterday with my doctor, so... <laughs> Um, that's not counting the repeated other parts, um, like from one injury, I basically totaled nearly two years when I broke my pelvis and ruptured my ureter, so yeah, I had hernia operations, repeated operations on the ureter, just, um, and they were only little little breaks, but they make it so hard when you're off for a little while and then you got to build your way back up again. We're always hearing about these rugby league players and rugby players that have an injury and it takes them one year to get back. You've had 30 years of this. Mentally, it must be difficult to keep picking yourself up, and clearly that's culminated in the decision to retire. Yeah, it has really. Like I say, um, I was actually going quite well before all this happened, but um, it just takes so long to get yourself going, and then um, you, you, your, income's, your income's not quite that good. Are you there? Yeah, we're still here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the income's not that good, and... Um, for that first starter, so uh, like I say, I've just made the decision. Um, I'm actually taking up a lawn mowing um, job, so um, it's going to be our own run. So no, it's something, something different, something new. Still doing outside work, and it's quite satisfying. So yeah, hopefully it all goes well. 881 wins a lofty. Does one Sorry. stand out? 881 wins, I think the record is uh, NZTR for you across your career. Does one stand out above all the rest? Uh, not really. I did Wellington Cup day was huge in its own right. Um, basically just, yeah, having six group ones to me and all the time I spent off was pretty good achievement myself. Um, and um, won most of the major cups, and let alone all the little country cups that I won. Um, they called me the Cups King at one stage. So, no, nothing really stands out. Just um, appreciate what everyone's done for me uh, along the way. So, no, I think I've had a pretty good run, considering apart from the injuries. Yeah, you must feel a little bit sad, although you won't be walking away from the racing family because they're such a close knit community. Yeah, and. Um, they always say once you get out, you always come back. So there's always a chance. <laughs> yeah, it's basically right. But um, it was more just to have a, an income that you know you're getting in each week. And um, with the racing, you never know what you're getting. Some weeks you earn, some weeks you don't. So it was just more having a permanent in income and and basically having weekends where we can go and do something. So it was more a lifestyle change, basically. OK, so the last winner will be Dean Martin, but I'm sure that you'll get a lot of support mowing the lawns from the racing fraternity. Where are you based now with, with your um, new business? We're based in Papakura, so we're sort of Manukau right through to Pukekohe area. Basically, we can do our work. Um, we've also, at this stage, um, got a 
bit of a warehouse work that will be coming up as well, just tidying up around warehouses as well. So, yeah, but um, anything we'd look at. So, no, well, our, our lawns are called cutaway lawns, so <laughs> I wanted a little cut, but I wasn't allowed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, but, no, hopefully it all goes well. Well, thanks for your time very much, uh, uh, Paul. Uh, you've always been a yep. pleasure uh, to deal with, and uh, hopefully we've only really briefly looked across your career, and maybe we can catch up with Steve Davis or uh, on one of our racing shows to do a bit more in-depth on you. It's been a pleasure uh, to deal with uh, throughout your career, and we wish you all the best uh, for the future. Yeah, thanks very much, Bevan, and we much appreciate it. Cheers.